Hi parents, I'm Mrs. Guzman, and this is my parent tip for turning video games into teachable moments, up next on Gifted Guzman. One of the problems I always hear from my students is that their parents think that they play video games for too long. And I can see how they can be using this controller way too long and way too often, and it might seem like it's a problem. So I wanted to talk to parents today about how the video games can actually be turned into teachable moments and what you can do to, to turn that into a teachable moment with your student. The first thing you have to do is kind of get to know the video games that they're playing. You can either talk to the student about the video game, they would love that. You can play it with them for a little while, they would really love that. Or you can secretly go to Google and just look up the storyline of their video game and find out what's going on in that particular video game. I talked to my students before making this video so that I could give you some tips on some of the current video games that they're playing. So the most current video game that they're playing is a video game called Fortnite. I have not played this video game myself, but I did go look up the storyline and I had some of them talk to me about it and I found out some of the upcoming things that are happening with Fortnite. So in Fortnite, apparently there's a meteor coming. It's it's a big area that they're making forts and they're trying to capture places and it's a third person shooter game. So it, it's basically them defending areas and trying to capture areas back and things like that. So one of the things I thought of since the meteors are coming in this game is a teachable moment would be to have them work on a science project. It could be as simple as a research project where they go and look up what is a meteor? What's the difference between a meteor and a meteorite? What happens when the, the meteors enter the Earth's atmosphere? How many of them do? You can even have them look up current newspaper articles. And when I say current, I'm talking about in about the last five years to see how many newspaper articles there are about meteors and meteorites or if there was something recent that happened. So that's a really easy way to do that. We actually talked about it this last week in my classroom, in my Texas history class, because we were looking at forts from different angles and how forts have changed over time. And some of the students talked about forts being used in, as entertainment. So you can do something like that. There are forts in Fortnite. You can talk about how forts have changed from being a military installation to now being something that we view as a museum or as entertainment. That's another way. Um, there also are different like articles of clothing and apparently some superhero type things that, that, that students can pick up and put on their characters in Fortnite. So another thing I thought that, that you could have them do is write like a short comic book story for their Fortnite character. So they're thinking up a whole backstory and what it is about their character they, they like and they can write a short story. This can be done with something as simple as a piece of printer paper that you fold into six squares and they can write a six square story and if they really enjoy writing it, they can keep going with more paper. Some of the other games that they talk to me about, uh, they're playing games called Black Ops. Black Ops has a big series. These are war type games. They happen in World War II, they happen in Vietnam. One of the characters talks to JFK. Again, that's tons of history. That's an easy research paper. They can research any one of these wars. They can research JFK and his presidency and do a short little re research paper report on that. They can read a novel. Um, one of the novels I would recommend is The Book Thief. That is from World War II. That was also turned into a ma major motion picture. So that's something that then you could play the game, read the book, and then watch the movie and have that tie in together. They can draw maps. Uh, one of the great things that they can do for social studies is to draw a map so they can draw a map of this area where they're playing the game. The maps are often available on the game so they could actually pause it and be looking at the map and drawing it and showing where is it north and south and east and west and some of the locations that are on the map and where are their buildings versus where is there just open land. They can talk about biomes, that's a science thing. A biome is a place like um, a desert, a grassland, the mountains, the taiga, those are different biomes. So they can maybe talk about the different biomes of the area where this happens. Let's see, what are some other ones they talk? Oh, they challenged me with Mario because they said there was no way I could think up lessons for every video game. And they were like, really Mario, you can't think up a lesson for Mario. Well, I happen to know that in Mario, when he's large, he jumps up and he hits a block and a flower will come up and it's a fire flower and he jumps on it and he can shoot fire. So I told them 
that there are actually native Texas flowers that we call the Indian fire wheel often. And so I challenged them to look up that flower and see what the real true name of that flower was and where it grows in Texas. And they kind of groan. <laughs> they were like, really? You can really turn any video game into a lesson? If you just look at the video game, there's any number of things. Mario is a plumber, he goes through the pipes. So even if you wanted to have them make a cute thing with some pipes and maybe make a pipe roller coaster or something like that, or they could look up the history of plumbing and where it all started and when did we first get plumbing because they don't always realize we didn't always have indoor plumbing and some places still don't. Everything has a history. Any kind of video game you can always tie it back to let's look up the history of it, let's see what happened in that time period, let's see how it changed over time. These are all easy lessons. You can always have them write a story about their character. Just imagine a day in the character's life and write a story. That's great um, to continue them in their writing skills because they definitely need those. For math, you can always have them write a persuasive essay and they can do the math of the number of hours that they play video games over the course of the year and how much they want to increase that or they can do math and go on a shopping trip and they have so much money that they can go on the shopping trip with and they can buy so many different video games with that money and they would have to look up deals and maybe look on different websites and see what they could find. That's a good way to incorporate math. There's any number of ways they can measure angles um, in any of the different video games. There are tons of ways to turn the video games into a lesson. I would encourage you to turn the video games into a lesson because children often have a hard time seeing the connection of everything within this world and how there are so many connections. So it's a great way to get them thinking about all the things that are out there and around them. So again, talk to them about their video games, look on Google and learn about their video games. If you have any questions about some video games that you know that they're playing and you can't quite think of a lesson and you'd like some ideas, uh, hit me up in the comments below and I'll actually respond back to you with some lessons that I can come up with about the video games. If you have any other questions um, about anything else, you can also hit me up in the comments and I'll respond to those. But just keep learning. Every day, keep learning.